Over the course of MMA history, there are a lot of fighters who despite their notable record, victories, and accolades get lost in the annals of time. Personally, I always found it weird that in a sport where we celebrate guys whose records aren't exactly flattering because we know a record isn't necessarily indicative of their impact to the sport, those same fans don't celebrate guys whose records were very impressive and had a lot of great victories for one reason or another. Here's the thing too, this doesn't necessarily go for guys who padded their record. This goes for guys whose records were excellent snapshots of how good they were. And in today's video of who, in my opinion, is the most underrated fighter of all time, I think this phenomenon applies to him to a T. Now, if you saw the thumbnail, then you know my answer is John Fitch. And honestly, this wasn't an easy decision to come to. I wrestled in my mind with a lot of fighters who I thought were underrated, but I chose Fitch because while the other fighters are at least mentioned, but snubbed out of their deserving place, John Fitch isn't even mentioned at all when talking about the greatest. However, before I get into my reasoning, here's just a little background info on John Fitch. John Fitch, who stands at six foot tall, was born in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Fitch was an NCAA Division I wrestler standout at Purdue University, where despite joining the team as a walk-on and going 8-23 in his sophomore year, he would go on to have an impressive 37-28 record the rest of the way and become the team captain. Not an Olympian, but definitely a capable wrestler. It was here that he would be introduced to MMA as Tom Erickson, yes, Tom Erickson from Pride, was the coach of Purdue and would regularly bring in MMA fighters to the wrestling gym where Fitch would be hooked to the sport. Fitch would go 4-2 with one no contest before going to the famous American Kickboxing Academy, aka, aka. <laughs> you see what I did there, aka, aka? Okay, moving on, moving on. From here, Fitch's career would take off as he'd go on a seven fight win streak before getting the call to the UFC. And it wasn't like he was being bums either. He was being the likes of a prime Shoney Carter and a Jorge Ortiz who only lost once at that time. Now in the UFC, he kept that momentum going where he went 14-3-1 with notable wins over Tiago Alves twice, and at the time one loss Diego Sanchez, and at the time undefeated Paulo Tiago, the same Paulo Tiago who knocked out Josh Koscheck the fight before I might add, Akira Gono, and gave Eric Silva his first loss in the UFC. Even the losses that Fitch had were the stiff competition, and those three losses were against the following a consensus top three greatest fighter of all time in George St. Pierre, a pre-USADA Johnny Hendricks, and a prime Damian Maya, who I might add was undefeated at Walter Waite to this point. However, he was controversially released after the Damian Maya fight, but he soon found a home at World Series of Fighting, which is now called PFL. And despite going off to a rocky start with a record of two and two, he would go undefeated the rest of the way in that promotion. John Fitch, while there, would win the World Series of Fighting Walterweight Championship and then vacate that belt to sign with Bellator. At Bellator, he would dominate Paul Daly and then enter the Walterweight Grand Prix, where he would take the then Walterweight Champion Rory McDonald to a draw, but because Rory was the champion, Rory advanced in the tournament. So that's impressive enough, but get this. Fitch did that at the age of 41 years old. So what I'm really trying to say is John Fitch was really freaking good. Now at the age of 42, Fitch has recently retired after a heel hook loss to Naaman Gracie at Bellator 246. But make no mistake, this was a competitive outing for John Fitch. So with all the ups and downs, Fitch finished his career with a impressive 32-8 with two draws and going 5-1-1 in his last seven fights. 
considering the fact that he fought into his 40s, it's actually really impressive that we didn't see a sharp decline from him. Now, why is he so underrated? Why isn't he talked about as much as he should? Personally, I came up with four reasons. Number one, when he really needed a win in the UFC, he didn't get it. I wouldn't call him a choke artist, but he definitely dropped the ball in those pressure moments. He really blew it against GSP, and there's no shame in losing to GSP, but John Fitch didn't show up at all for that fight and got mauled. A win over BJ Penn would have really did him some good to get some mainstream appeal, but he instead gets a majority draw. In all fairness, I thought he won and deserved the win, but it's not a robbery, so that's on him. Then he gets knocked down 12 seconds by Johnny Hendricks, which is, yikes, yeah, no, not a good look. And the loss to Damian Maya got him released, albeit unfairly released, but released nonetheless. Number two, he just wasn't that exciting. His style isn't very exciting as it's a wrestling based smother style and he wasn't really known for sickening ground and pound either. So a lot of people thought he was boring. Plus, as smart and eloquent as he is during his podcast appearances, he's just not very interesting to listen to when it came to traditional media and interviews. He's not much of a trash talker and wasn't very much of a comedian during his time in the UFC. So while it shouldn't matter, unfortunately, it does. Number three, he does have a failed PED test, and hilariously, he was very critical of steroids during his career. But considering that a bunch of other fighters on people's GOAT list have failed PED tests, this really isn't damaging to his legacy as it should be. However, the main reason is, well, him and Dana have bad blood. Look, their history warrants its own video at a different time, but basically, Dana not putting John Fitch in the UFC Hall of Fame is kind of expected and I wouldn't see it happening anytime soon. Here's an example of how bad the feud is between the two. In 2010, after Fitch beat Alves again, I might add, at UFC 117, Dana White criticized John Fitch's style, then proceeded to give Jake Shields a title shot with Jake Shields having a similar style to Fitch, and despite Shields' story career outside the UFC, Shields was only 1-0 in the UFC at the time. Ouch. Also, keep in mind that when Fitch got released, he got released as a result of a loss to an at the time undefeated at middleweight, Damian Maya, and literally the fight before, he handed Eric Silva his first loss in the UFC. So, to lose only one straight and get cut from the UFC means you're really pissed off Dana White at some point. Or, or, it could be that he wanted his release. I don't know, you make of that what you will. Oh yeah, double also, John Fitch is also part of that class action lawsuit against Zufa LLC, which really exposed a lot of how bad Dana White and the UFC's business practices are. So. Yeah, needless to say, the two hate each other, and unfortunately for Fitch, Dana White controls a lot of the narrative for a lot of MMA guys, especially when their best years were in the UFC, like Fitch's was. So the point form version is, John Fitch is really, 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 really underrated. He beat a lot of guys, and his decline was pretty minimal, even in his 40s. He's probably going to stay underrated and not talked about due to some circumstances that was and was not his fault. Probably the biggest circumstance for him not being mentioned as a legend as much as he should be is because he pissed off the one guy who probably controls how fans view him. And yeah, but if you think I'm wrong or you have another pick for who you think is underrated, let me know in the comments. I'm Michael from The Light Kick. Please like and subscribe because it helps us a lot. And until next time, later.